ain't going back. Now I'm going to buy into all that. Hey, hey, ain't going to hide. Going to let all the fears lie. Go for the nature. It's on my side. Got a hold of the love and growing inside. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome once again to The New Now. I'm delighted to have Tony Sayers back with us. We're going to continue our conversation on new age nonsense and how that can be a detriment to your own personal growth and evolution. And today we're going to talk about dead ending the new age. Hey, Tony. Hey, I wish we could dead end the new age once and for all. Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Well, you know. A lot more free time. (laughs) Well, let's see. Like, how can... Like you've been working in your work, I've noticed, to dead end the new age for your, uh, shall we say, customers, the people you work with, a lot of the, uh, um, you've been showing, let's say, the bricks in the wall. I guess that's a good way to put it by by exposing each of the new agers. So, yeah. you know, instead of saying these are the way through, you're going, hey, look, another dead end brick in the wall, and it's this person or that person or this topic or, you know, that that website or, or YouTube channel. So, you know, what do you think it means, you know, to dead end the new age? And, and, and why does it take people into that cul-de-sac? where they can't go any further. I know you've chatted about that quite a bit. Yeah. Well, just just on the the review side of of what I do, uh, I don't do it to be an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I do it. I do it because I worked and I see and I get emails every day of people being harmed from all these different new age modalities Mm. and cults. Um, Mm. For example, I had an email today from a lady who is really concerned because um, her daughter-in-law or something has gone off with, uh, I don't know if you know Eldora and Siman, but I did a a review video on them a couple of months back. And um, she's gone to Croatia with her her daughter to join the cult there that's, that's going on and like left everything. And she's like, what can I say? What can I say to, I've watched your video, like, you know, I've been, and I'm really concerned. And I'm like, well, really, there's not really a lot you can say because when people are in a cult, it, it, the only thing that's going to get them out of it is a really bad experience um, because the more you try and tell people, a lot of the time, the more they'll dig in. Um, so the good thing is with, with I guess the work that I'm doing it's just there I'm not like particularly like forcing people I'm just putting it out there and you know a lot of the people that are coming across it they're ready they're 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 asking questions things aren't adding up with a lot of the stuff that they've been taught in the new age so they're kind of prime for re-education but when you have a situation where people are deep deep within it and they're under this what I call like new age spell, this false white light spell, which is, I would say, a, a, an actual energetic frequency that is distorting their consciousness. Um, and I, I, I can, can say that you can actually sense and tune into that and see that playing out in people, especially mm. when you when you look at the eyes. You know, I often talk about the eyes with with a lot of these new age teachers, like. The lights are on, but no one's home. There's like this haze. And and this is what people are falling into. They're falling into this spell, this haze, which is trapping their consciousness uh, energetically into, as we say, an, an, another brick wall or a cul-de-sac. Um, and so it really takes something big to snap someone out of that and you know, of course, there's a lot of resistance. And I liken it to um, when I was vegan. Um, I, the veganism, as far as I'm concerned, is a cult. <laughs> and I was heavy into that. And there was nothing. No one would have convinced me mm. of, you know, our species-specific need to eat animal products at the time. I was completely sold. I was so deep down that rabbit hole and so dug in <laughs> to it and and i'm embarrassed a little bit about it now um but you live and learn right but the only thing that that snapped me out of that was my own poor health declining so badly to the point where my memory declined so badly that i'm like hang on a minute i'm supposed to be on the quote unquote healthiest di- mm-hmm. diet i'm eating all this kale all this rabbit food like all these salads like what's going on here and um, 
you know, it, I had deteriorated so badly and so quickly that I, I had to look at things again. Mm. And, and often you find that, that the people that actually leave these cults and the stories that I hear, it, it takes something really, unfortunately, something really bad for, for the penny to finally drop. Mm. And then they start asking questions. Um, but as I say, a lot of, um, a lot of people are, a really, you know, questioning the the things they're being taught there because they're not seeing their life moving forward. Mm. Um, they're, they're in many times, many cases, going backwards uh, energetically and just in their physical lives. Um, and so, you know, that's also good to see. Just organically, there seems to be people that are uh, ready for what I refer to as an awakening from the false awakening, which is what the, the, the new age is. Um, so I completely forgot what your question was. No, no, it's, it's you know, oh, we're talking about, no, no, <laughs> all, all good. Like, like uh, let's say, why do you think so many people get caught going down this cul-de-sac? Oh, yeah, that was the question, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the reason that, that they get caught down this uh, cul-de-sac is, uh, because it just feels so good, right? It just feels so good. And um, the new age really What is... do you mean? What do you mean? Like, like how did you get in the cul-de-sac well, of veganism, let's say? Well, uh, I mean, veganism got me through my empathy because I, um, I, I watched those documentaries that they put on Netflix, which, you know, really we shouldn't be taking anything uh, on Netflix seriously because it's, it's cult-owned, but... Um, I, I watched uh, I watched a couple of those documentaries, and when you see the things, in, and I'm, I, you know, although I eat meat and stuff again now, I'm not an advocate of factory farming. I buy organic and mm -hmm. promote, um, you know, grass fed without all the antibiotics and all the the, the crap that goes in it. But but they got me big time in, 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 with my empathy because uh, that, that that was that's a strength for me and it's and it's a weak spot and um, when you watch those documentaries of you know what they do in those uh, factories you you wouldn't be human if you didn't like ha mm. you didn't empathize with that and so uh, yeah that that's how I got hooked into that um, but the new age is is different in the fact that it it feels good to people because they don't really have to do any hard work on themselves or face any shadows. They can just pray to Archangel Michael. They can just um, say a hundred affirmations in half an hour. Um, they can think love and light. They can just keep their, all they need to do really to, uh, to progress in their eyes is to keep their vibration high. So that means not looking at anything negative because you quote unquote will draw more of it in, which is a massive deception and one of the worst ones because you know what you resist, you persist. And I always use the example, if you break your leg, you're not just going to leave it swinging. <laughs> you're going to go and get it plaster casted so you don't get gangrene and have it chopped off. Um, but they they are they are being told, look, you know, don't don't look at anything negative mm. because you draw more of it in, it will lower your vibration, which will mean that you will end up in like a that you will end up staying in this three D matrix, and and you won't be able to quote unquote ascend to the fifth dimension where the new earth exists and everyone is, um, you know, getting high on unicorn farts and rainbows the rainbow bridge and, and all that kind of stuff so if you're someone with a lot of trauma and someone comes along and says hey look you don't have to worry about what happened to you when you were five years old just focus on this if you need help archangel michael's there or you've got the arcturians over there they're, they're going to support you all your guides your guides are always on hand so that takes the decision making process away because and I still get it today, people asking their guide stuff. I mean, guides are just entities masquerading. And um, so it's it's hooking people in to all this feel-good factor, um, which is based on nothing, and in fact actually based in evil, um, because all these uh, things that people are connecting with are, you know, my experience 10 years almost in clearing this stuff, it, they're just entities masquerading of the light, the false white light. 
um, but they um, they make people feel good. You know, people because they're so traumatized and because this planet is so difficult right now, even before all of this. I mean, it's completely wacky now, but it, it's very difficult, even if you haven't got a lot of trauma, to to be here right now and witness what's going on. And especially if you know the agenda, it's way way easier to just check out um, spiritually bypass things and think love and light and just hope that you end up on in in the new earth and you know you ascend out of this matrix by doing absolutely nothing i think you made a really good point though so uh, in with your your vegetarianism or your veganism compared to this do you think like i think people are naturally loving right or empathic or, and they want yeah. do, do you think and i would say yes but uh, i would like to get your take on uh the new age tricking people through their love into this nonsense and bullshit taking advantage of their 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 desires let's say to trust and to love and to be part of community you know that sort of thing yeah they are, yeah they play on all of that but it, it's fake it's all fake like it, it's false white light and they come across fake and false i mean some of the new ages that i review they've got hundreds and thousands of, of followers mm. taking manifestation courses and going on these retreats and and the stories that I've heard, but when you when you see them speak, you I, you don't feel the heart energy. They say, "I love you," and you know all this. We love you, and we we care about you, and we're a family. But you, I don't get the feels. I don't get the feelings behind their words. Their words are empty, um, and that is something that I would encourage people to to try and tune into if, if we're, if people are still sort of into that stuff, like what's the feeling behind the words coming through? Because when I review them, I just feel a whole load of emptiness coming from these people. And it's not based in any kind of genuine love or genuine feeling. So they, they, they throw the word love out, love and light and, and all these buzzwords. Um, but there's there's not a lot behind it in in in, in my experience. Of, but do you have I'm any te- do you have any tests that uh, that you could suggest? I mean, like like I'm like you, like I can feel the the bullshit you know a mile away. I can smell it coming now, or the unicorn farts. So they don't smell as well as uh, they're supposed uh-huh. to. Uh, mm-hmm. But so let's say there's a lot of people that are you know walking towards this dead end. They haven't reached the bricks yet, though. You know they haven't reached. And you you say you can see their eyes are empty. Me too. You know you can feel their their promises hollow. Me as well. But how did you get to a point, you know, that you can discern, you know, the 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 honest from from the dishonest? And what would you suggest to people that are maybe going, you know, I can hear the people screaming now, but I like, you know, e- ET. Well, we'll say that uh, and that's just some initials of a fellow. Or I like I like, you know, the, the 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 lady from the future that you've talked about, right? I've got people supporting them, or or this guy and this girl. What do you mean the Arcturians are going to help me? Of course, I can hear my spirit guides. So how did you? Yeah. Um, learn to discern and what would you suggest to people listening so that they can maybe, you know, wake up and smell the, 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 the unwashed unicorns? Well, I mean, I, uh, first of all, I had my own bad experiences with the, the false light. I've been blinded by the false light as well. Um, way back. Um, I mean, I was, I was into Reiki at one stage. So people, people forget that, you know, I was into it. I wasn't into it massively, but I was into it enough but um, I, you know, I was I was at one point, you know, into Arcturians and stuff like that, and I um, I just saw a trend where I wasn't feeling great, and you know, I saw other people around me not feeling great, and I'm like, well, hang on a minute, this this isn't really great, then, is it? It's like, um, and then it was weird because once I had those realizations, everything else snowballed, and. Um, you know, obviously, down the years, I, I, I've seen trends, trend after story after story after story after story, of of people that have either connected with with spirit guides, loved ones, angels, aliens, and they're all feeling drained. A lot of the time, their lives go from bad to worse. Like there's 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 no, there doesn't seem to be like a an uphill. Uh, climb with it with their lives it's all downhill from when they started connecting with these i mean i've told the story before where 
there was one guy who thought he was um, dealing with his dead dad or connecting with his dead dad, deceased dad. And he was convinced and he was following all his advice. He, he ended up losing his business, his wife. He ended up having a car crash. I mean, his, his whole life just, just went to pot through the ad advice he was getting through what he thought was his deceased um, father. And, um, you know, I have countless amount of stories of, of how they trick people and manipulate people. Other times where, um, you know, a, a who's, lady... The, who's the they? You mean the people, the new agers or their guys? Well, people, or... people, I work with people that have come out the new age. So I get to hear all their stories. So how did right? this guy get tricked is what I mean. It's like, did, did, was, he, well, was somebody he, channeling he his father? Was, or Yeah, he thought he was channeling. Right. And he was like, I'm convinced. I was convinced it was him. I was getting this information. He knew things gotcha. about me. He knew things about me that no one else would know because the entities know. They know things about right. us. Um, and so, yeah, that, that happened. And then there's, there's other stories of where, you know, uh, a prominent New Age lady at one point was uh, channeling Archangel Michael. And she was getting all these through through his messages, getting getting everyone hooked into this false white light grid um, that ever, that was siphoning off their energy and and yeah, other stories of people where they've thought they were connecting in with different entities and and it always ends in tears. That's the common de denominator. It always ends up in tears. And there may be what I call like a false high for a while. They might they have to give you a bit of sugar to to keep you coming back. But there is always the inevitable crash. And um, so yeah, it's time after time after time. And then when the, and then we see it when we die in terms of the um, the false white light and everything like that. And um, I would encourage people to check out Forever Consciousness YouTube channel. I don't know if you're subscribed over there. But he actually um, does a great job of reviewing um, NDEs. And we see the same trickery going on there where, you know, these entities are showing up as massive, gigantic Jesus figures and deceased ones. And they, they, they talk about where there's a waiting room of souls waiting to come for their life reviews and then coming back round. So you, there's like two tunnels. There's a tunnel of souls going into this waiting area and then there's this, this other tunnel coming back like two roads coming back the souls going in, back into human bodies uh and all these tales of people coming back where you know they've they've had these experiences with entities um so a lot of it comes from uh experience of working with people and hearing all these horror stories um but so, so what people really need to do to go back to your initial question is is really strengthening that muscle of discernment. So as humans, we are way too trusting or and we have been way too trusting. I mean, you, you see what goes on with like the politicians. We, 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 go, we go to the voting booths every time and we get let down and we go back to the voting booths. I don't know if it's trust or it's just stupidity or what, but, but we tend to just... Um, not trust our own um, intuition and our own um, thoughts, really, and that's that 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 becomes um, an issue when we live in a sea of disinformation and misinformation, and everyone's vying for our attention and trying to lead us here, there, and everywhere. So we really have to become masters of discernment, and it's a lost art. It really is a lost art. Humans in general have really forgotten how to think, the actual process of, of thinking. And if you've, uh, if you've ever heard of the trivium, that's, uh, that's a very interesting way and look, uh, a, a good way of looking at how we should discern information. But I always say to people, and this really applies to New Age, because, because the New Age feels really good, it's separating what feels good to what feels true. And there's a real big difference because what what what, what often feels true doesn't always feel good. No, but we've doesn't. got our, yeah, but that's where we have to be courageous enough to go, okay, it hurts, that stings, but it feels true. Mm. So I'm gonna go there. But what happens is people have a left and right, and the new age is like it it gives you all the feels. And the truth's over here, and it's like, oh, that feels good. That feels way better than looking at that, so I'm going to go over here. Mm. 
So this is where people are getting trapped. They're taking the left road into the cul-de-sac because it feels all gooey inside, the rainbow farts and all that stuff. But the right the the, the right side where perhaps it's not going to feel good, there's going to be some turmoil, perhaps you're going to have to face things you don't want to have to face, you know, looking at the darkness. But But that's where the truth is, and that's really ultimately how we're going to get free. So um, it's it's really learning, relearning how to think and learning those discernment skills. How, how does that how does that person feel? How does that information feel? Does it feel true? Does it resonate? Not does it feel good? And I think the more of us that continue to do that and strengthen that muscle of discernment, we're going to make better decisions not only for our own lives but as a collective. The more of us move into that kind of sovereign way of thinking let's look at the darkness i I like that you brought that up so you you say people are going in the wrong way because they don't want to look at the darkness so maybe in your opinion what do you think that darkness is that people have inside them you know why is it there what is it there you know why do they need to look at it where did it come from well i mean we all have darkness and yeah i'm not sitting here saying i'm fully healed and you know a a ball of light or what, what have you uh, I've still got my blind spots, but I, I work on them. I have sessions with uh, a lady in Canada, um, and my life's changed so much since I've faced the things that were holding me back. And, you know, I've been doing that a good few years now. And it's not easy. It's not nice. I mean, I haven't had um, anything like as much trauma as, as some of my clients. You know, down the years I've worked with, with all kinds of people, people that have had you know, ritual abuse and all kinds of stuff, the unimagin- unimaginable. But I've seen and worked people that have gone through the process of starting from scratch, not wanting to look at it, but going through it. Sometimes it takes months, years, but they come out the other side, a completely different person, more empowered, um, you know, more sovereign. Um, and that's what I'm talking about in the sense of um, that's the hard route. You know, that isn't angels, that isn't archangels going to sort everything out for us. You know, my guide's just going to tell me to sit on a rock and sing Kumbaya and, you know, that's going to heal my trauma. That Me me going to, to the jungle and taking jungle juice, a cup of jungle juice, and then, you know, years of trauma and abuse just disappears. No. You, you know, that, 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 that's, that, that feels good that, and that's easy, which is why people gravitate towards it. But it's not really where the gold is. Um, the gold is really facing those things on a deeper level and and transmuting them and alchemizing them. Um, so we do be, then become true anchors of light because in the new age they they will tell people that they are anchoring the light, mm. which I, which I feel is a, a half truth because I do feel that once you have transmuted a certain amount of darkness within you. I do believe that you do become an anchor of light and you do hold a frequency um, that is not higher in, in the kind of egoic uh, way, but just a, a more, oh, you've disappeared. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still here. I just kind of hit a thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It, it's it's almost like you're, you're embodying sovereign energy. And I think that's where we need to go. We need to um, become self-sovereign. Mm. They've, they've they've stolen the term sovereignty and used it for their you know corruption royal families and all of that but the word sovereignty is very important for us people in the freedom movement because that is the energy that is the frequency that we that we want to embody so that's all the things that you were talking about earlier you know self responsibility you know taking action courage like we have to define Instead of spirituality, why not have sovereignty? Mm. I like that way more, way, mm. way more. Mm. So I'm try like I don't even like the term spiritual these days. I I way prefer the term sovereign. Um, and part of that is is embodying the fact that we are energy and we don't die. But it's not this kind of fakeness which spirituality mm. has built itself on now. Um, and I'm really keen and really. Uh, excited about the amount of people now that are starting to 
have that awakening from the awakening and start to move, starting to move into that sovereign mindset where we're discerning information, you know, the other things that we spoke of. Um, we have to define the whole thing into a new way of thinking away from this, um, this fake spiritual that was set up by our controllers when you when you look at at the roots of it, you know Helena Blavatsky, she was a Luciferian. All the teachings in there, but he, and I've said this so many times, it, it's it's genius what they've done with that New Age movement. It it's really is. Yeah. I mean, I, I I I couldn't have designed it better. You know, it, the way they have done that, the things that they have done that, they've tapped into every part, every weak part of our psyche, and and pulled it in, pulled it into this cul-de-sac. Um, and it just goes to show the, the brilliance of, uh, of humans in their expanded consciousness that despite the amazing trick, the amazing deception, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people every day waking up from that. And uh, that's a testament to us and our power um, which is also something that I'm really big on at the moment is we need to remember who we are and we need to stop playing so small. Uh, you know, we have such a low opinion of ourselves, not only many of us individually through trauma, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. You know, that's a big wound that most mm. people carry. But we're constantly being told from governments that there's too many of us here. We're destroying the planet. You know, we're... We're causing all these issues. And and so, and when you talk to people about this, like the average Joe on the street, they'll say to you, Yeah, there's too many of us here. Yeah, we were over. Like the way we the way we talk about ourselves um, and think about ourselves individually and collectively is we consider us so weak and so powerless and so pathetic and it's time to stop that. It really is time to stop thinking that we are powerless and that they, these parasites have all the power because mm. they do. They, they don't. They, the only power that they have is the power that we give them. And these entities, they are terrified. They are terrified of us waking up to our true power, our true sovereignty. And what we need to do is we need to put all the saviour programmes in the bin, all of them. And we need to realize a big, if I was to write one of the written tenets of sovereignty, it was nobody's going to come and save us. That has got to be number one. <laughs> if we're defining a new way of being, we got to put all of those savior programs in the bin and, and remember who we are. And people ask me, you know, who are the good guys here? If there's no guides, if there's no angels, if there's, Where's God? With Jesus? Who? Who is it? It's us. Yeah. We're the ones. We're the good. We're the good entities. We're the angels. We're the God force. This is the cosmic joke. This is the cosmic joke. Uh, we've been beaten down for so long, and we've forgotten. We've completely forgotten who we are. And because many of us have had a lot of trauma, and we haven't faced those shadows, it's very hard for people to accept when someone like myself comes along or other people and say, Hey, you, you remember how special you are as a human and how great you are. You know, we're, we're multidimensional. We, we, we have all these psychic abilities, telepathic abilities, untapped, probably teleportation, um, healing abilities. You know, we can, we can heal ourselves um, to, to a certain degree, depending on the, the level of uh, the, the, what's going on. But my point is, is that we, they want us to forget or forget all of that. They want us to forget how creative we are. You know, we we can get we there's there's so many ways that we can get out of things with our creativity. Like when they created the internet, they didn't think for one minute that you know the dumb humans, because that's how they perceive us, would would use it to. Mm. Uh, against them for right. the podcasts like this and to raise awareness and things like that. So I, I'm really trying to encourage people now to just remember who they are as, as humans and as a human family, you know, I'm mm. sure, I'm sure it, we, I mean, when we, when you look around and you go, 
walking on the street and there's people wearing masks and we spoke about this off air, you know, kids wear, you, you, you think we're, we're degenerate, you know, you, you, you can't help but think of it. And yeah, there are people that are, they have descended so badly and we're probably going to lose a lot of those in the next few years. But there's a pool of people and it's growing every day that aren't degenerate. And actually they're going the other way. They're on the up and they're becoming more expanded and they're tapping into more concepts and ideas and creativity. And just as the dark is coming to the surface and being exposed, new ways are coming to the surface as well. New new ways that we can explore and exploit technology to our benefit. Mm. Uh, different things like you know I talk about the patches and the, the using the 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 healing uh, the light of energy of the body to heal. That's just one example, but all these other things as well that the, the alternative ways of healing. So, but there's also a lot of stuff that we need to be careful in that as well. So, my point is is that it's this isn't a game over by any stretch, and they know that. And they, this is why they have to do all the things that they do to us physically, astrally, like constant mind control with the TV, constant bombardment of chemicals in the food, the water, the air. It's non stop. Ne- they don't take a break. They don't have a weekend off. No, no vacations. Astrally, <laughs> astrally it, it implants entities trying to mess with us, trying to put us off our path, hijack our thoughts. So you can look at it two ways. Well, we're, we're screwed. No, no, don't look at it that way. Why are they doing that? What is it about us as a species that they need to do all this to us? Because they know, they know that they know who and what we are. And they know that when we, we're en- enough of us are in that expanded awareness and embody that sovereign energy, and we've been these stupid savior programs that have got us nowhere through history how many times have we prayed and done these rituals and moon ceremonies and like we're more enslaved than ever balance the chakras oh yeah but tony the chakras were around in 1960 all right well how's that going how's that going? yeah <laughs> right all this stuff we need to start again and re i think we need to redefine things and redefine what it means to be human and spiritual and and I'm seeing more and more people moving into that sovereign mindset now. And, and I think the more of us that do that, uh, that, that sovereign energy is uncontrollable. I would agree. Uh, it's, yeah. it's not going to be um, dictated to. Um, but we need to also do the work in order, in order to uh, embody that. Well, let's... You know, if you, if you've got all this trauma blocking you from yes. feeling fit from feeling sovereign and feeling like you're a powerful being and you're uh, you know you're you're part of something that is actually really great it's just been beaten down for so long it's it's hard it's hard to embody that unless you do the work on yourself well well, let's talk about trauma and blind spots you know i think we put it there ourselves right a lot of people even the people i talk with today you know i do some work with others as well and they say no it's not my fault it happened when i was five it happened when i was six my parents were horrible, my my priest was horrible, et cetera, et cetera. And in my opinion, you know, the trauma is in there because you let it in, right? And, you know, so maybe we should talk a little bit about blind spots you mentioned, something you're working on in, in relation to, okay, people are at this dead end. What do they do when they're there? What do their blind spots look like? And how, you know, you, you've, you've given them a very good, um, uh, let's say, inspiration for what they can be, right? But then I hear some people going, okay, that's great, Tony, you know, and I agree with everything you've said, by the way, just, just to, just to put that out there, but I'm in this dead end. What do I do? All right. You know, what, what is my blind spot? How did it get there? And, and how do I recognize it and get over it? Well, I mean, your blind spots are where you get triggered. Uh, mm. Your blind spots are the negative thoughts you have about yourself. Um, for example, if you don't feel good enough or don't feel worthy, you've got there's, there's parts in your shadow that at some point were made to feel not worthy and not good enough. That may have came from a parent. It may have been from at school. Maybe you were bullied or something like that. So that needs to be work on. 
if you've got like a scarcity mindset, you know, that's that's something in your shadow where at some point there was a lack, for mm. example. If you're a really controlling person, you want to control everything. You know it's not right, but you're controlling anyway. That's a part of you that needs to be healed because at some part, at some point in your childhood, you weren't in control. So a, a very strong controlling part has come in to protect you. So you you can see where you need to work when you look at the um the more neg- the more negative aspects of your character. Um, you know, if you've got a self sabotage, uh, you know, you, you're in a relationship and you just start causing an argument for no reason. You don't even understand why you did it. Mm. Well, that's because your subconscious um, would rather you hurt yourself than someone else hurt you because when you were younger, someone hurt you and you were out of control. So that's what. So if you're constantly self sabotaging, then you know that there's something you need to work on there. So it's through our more um, negative behavioural traits that's where we need to look, and also where we get triggered. So if you get easily offended, then maybe there's something there that you need to work on, or and and also the patterns that we see in our lives. You know, if we're drawing in the same person over and over again in a different space suit. So we keep getting abandoned and it's like, why do people keep abandoning me? Well, were you abandoned when you were five or what happened? So it's looking at the trends and and the patterns in life and and just being more self-aware as to, oh my God, I got really defensive then. What what where has that come from? Well, I got really triggered when that person said to me, What what was it in me that 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 needs to be healed that got that got triggered? Do you think so, perhaps they could have abandoned themselves at that point? I mean, that's something that I've Yeah, a lot of people have abandoned themselves. And a, another interesting thing as well is people are, people are, and this is ties into what I was saying earlier, people have parts that are there that prevent them from shining their light, from being the, the true version of, of who they are supposed to be. There's all these blockages, which may be not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy, wanting to hide. Um, so, so what we do is we, we, with all of that unhealed stuff, we end up just being thirty percent of who we truly could be if we healed ourselves. Because once those, I call them holographic imprints, the inner children and sometimes inner adults. Once they're resolved and they're not stuck in trauma and you've changed those holographic imprints, you start you, you start to uh, speak a different version of you into existence and you start, you start to embody a different version of you in, in existence and, you, and you, you become the person that you were supposed to become because mm. all your parts are healed and so they're happy and so internally you're expressing um, a, a much more stronger inner core. You see what I mean? I do. I do. And so um, the the issue is is that we're we're fragmented. So many of us are fragmented from childhood traumas that we're like Humpty Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> so we're, there's bits and pieces of us that are together, but there's still a whole load of broken bits, and we're trying to make it. <laughs> um, while we're broken it's, it's, it's almost like the, the thing that's coming to me it's like someone running a marathon but they've got like a I don't know a sprained ankle or something so they're like ho- hobbling along <laughs> and and allegorically I think that's what's going on and uh, yeah the more the more of us that, that, that can that can do that work that the more of ourselves we're going to embody. Well, I call it like true essence. You're bringing that essence back, that childlike essence that we uh, lose. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Maybe we can circle back. I'm curious about one thing, if you know the ending of the story, that fellow that was um, channeling his father, you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation and you know, lost his wife, lost his job, lost. What happened with him? Like, how did, uh, did, is there a happy ending, so to speak? Did he finally figure out, like, how did he get to a point where he could embody everything we've talked about in this conversation through that horrible experience he had with the new mm-hmm. age. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with him, it's, it was a few years ago that I worked, I worked with him. So I, I haven't spoke to him recently, so I'm going to be honest and I, I don't know what's, what his situation is right now, 
But I know at the time he was having all kinds of realizations um, around what he thought was benevolent beings. And I know for a fact that he quit trying to tap into other beings out there. So that in itself was progress. But I don't know if he fully went down the, the, the road of fully going, facing all his shadows and that kind of thing. Um, but some, a, a lot of people I've worked with have done that. And, and the, uh, the amazing thing is, is seeing the changes in people. Um, just a couple of examples. Um, actually, one guy I'm, I'm, I was working with, he, he's from my home county in, in the UK, in Essex. And uh, he's a, a wonderful portrait drawer. And uh, he had these parts of him, and I'm sure he won't mind me sharing, that wanted to hide away, didn't want to be seen, you know, not good enough. But he was so talented. And uh, over the week, slowly but surely, he's been gaining confidence. And now he's he's going to quit his job and he's going to move. He's moving house. He's going to do this for a living, this portrait work. And, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's other people that are also starting different things and doing really what their, their soul wants them to do. Cause, uh, when you've got those parts of you that are unhealed, you, you kind of, um, you end up doing things that you don't really want to do a lot of the time. Uh, but when, when you become more, uh, internally balanced, it's almost like that healed in a child doesn't want you to do a half measure it wants you no. to go out into the world and actually do what um what fills your your soul with happiness um well, so how, how did he get from there to here the, the portrait fellow how did he get from you know having a bad job let's say he didn't like to following his heart's desires yeah well i wouldn't say that he <laughs> didn't he didn't like his job but it wasn't i mean his passion is through art right so um but yeah, I mean, he just he just went th through the and he he had a lot of trauma. Uh, you know, he grew up without a mother or father for mm. different reasons. So he had massive abandonment wounds, and so he's he's had to what I call reparent himself, go back to okay. all those versions of himself. You know, make the child feel safe, change that holographic imprint, and um, and to the point where all his like little boys are, are in a good place now. And so then they're, they're, now they're, they're feeling strong and ready to express it, it themselves, which expresses him through himself mm. um, to what he's doing now. So yeah, there's a lot of success stories, but you know, a lot of people don't want to take up that work and it's, it's hard and people don't want to face it. So, um, but it's, it's the best road that you can walk in my opinion. I agree. I, I, I like the way you put it because I've had a similar experience in healing the child inside, going back and talking to yourself. Like, what would yeah. you say to your five-year-old now? Yeah. Right. And, you know, in those experiences. Yeah. But we, so, so there's many holographic imprints. So you would have maybe a five-year-old, maybe the, maybe the seven-year-old version of you when your dad first shouted at you. Maybe there's a, a nine-year-old version of you when you were at school and you got bullied. And maybe there's a, I mean, I've gone back into memories where I've been stuck in the birth canal at, at birth, you know, because the way birthing's done, it's all un, unnatural. Mm. Um, and um, what that did, that created the scarcity part in me because I thought I was going to run out of air. So I actually went back to the, yeah, because the, the woman is supposed to squat, not lay. Mm. The, the whole the whole way birth is set up is satanic, right? They 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 try and invoke as much trauma on the baby right from the get go. Mm. So they have set up the birth uh, the birth birthing process in a very satanic way. So the woman's supposed to squat and lay. If you watch like animals, they don't they don't like lay down, right? <laughs> it, it's it just falls like it falls down, right? So and then they cut the umbilical cord way too early which is the the baby's nutrition uh, access to nutrition so that traumatizes and then you uh, then they whisk the baby off into an incubator and in it's mo uh, vital moments of bonding which causes massive abandonment um and all the other stuff that goes on um probably they're they're ready with injections and all kinds of stuff now i, I don't know what it's like but but the point is is that the first moments for a baby on the earth and I've I've had I've worked with other people. I remember one one lady I worked with. We went back to a memory, and she was stuck in the birth canal. And she was like, "Tony, I'm telling you, I don't want to come out. I'm speaking to my baby. He doesn't. She doesn't want to come out. <laughs> she. Don't, I was like, she probably knows uh, what what this place is like. So, um, 
But but when I went back and healed that part, my baby was so angry at not only my parents but the the nurses and the doctors, and he was like, "This is so messed up. Why why is it? Why is it? Why have you set it all up like this?" <laughs> So there was a lot of anger there as well. But yeah, I mean, you can go back into the womb. A lot of us take our um, our negative characteristics off from our, from a parent. So if a parent has got a real deep sense of lack of self-worth, then that can be passed on to the, the baby in the, in the womb. Um, so that's the other reason to do the healing. If you're thinking about being a mother or father, that you're not passing that... Uh, onto the to the next one in line right so it's so interesting it's, it's a good point it's so, it's so vast and deep all of the all of that stuff on that level so i guess dead ending the new age i guess could be uh, seen as you know uh, self-examination or examining yourself way back down to your very first breath even before and and uh, you know how you were an angry baby i like that because i was very angry when i was young as well at my parents my religion my schools my friends so-called at the time and all of those things and you know picking that up and, and healing myself is you know allowed me to fly out of my dead end yeah so to yeah speak. yeah a lot of <laughs> I've, I've had to work through a lot of anger and uh you know I, I don't feel it anymore um and like i said I, I, i'm not sitting here saying i'm fully healed actually the thing that i'm working on at the moment is a lack of patience and I, know, <laughs> I noticed this about myself the other day i was in a store here the Mexicans are lovely people, but they're a little bit slow uh, in, on some occasions uh, when you want to buy things, you know, the, the, everything's at a really slow pace. And I'm standing in the queue. I think I went to buy some water or something. And uh, it's taken ages. Like, and there's people with all kinds, and they've got one person working. And like, I'm thinking, why is there not many? Why is there, why is there only one person working? Why haven't they got more staff? And I'm getting hit up in the queue. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, Tony, where is this coming from? Mm. Like, where is this impatience coming from? And uh, so when I have my session next uh, next time, I'm going to look at that and uh, and and explore why, why I have that. But... Um, so yeah, anytime you spot something about yourself that's not not really, because when you have things like that, it's an energetic charge that is detrimental to you. Yes. So that impatience, it's not doing me any favors because energetically, I'm, you know, I'm wa I'm wasting energy, and you know, it's 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 not a good energy, right? And uh, so the more you you work through those and you heal them, you become the calm through the storm. So I'm a lot calmer in general um, in most things, but I did notice that there's still a bit of impatience that I need to work on. So well, I, I like the fact that you're still working on yourself. Like I do the same. I have sessions with a friend who calls me out and my stupidities, my being, you know, he says, you're still being an asshole or Enzo here and there. And you're, you know, you're not paying attention enough to hear and you're not doing good. And, you know, it gets you angry at the time. But, you know, when I sit and meditate the next day, I go, hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so maybe that's one of the answers to the questions we posed at the beginning of this chat is how to help yourself out of the dead end, you know, to see the bricks in the wall in that even people like yourself and like myself that are, working to help, let's say, by sharing our stories, we're still working on ourselves at the same time. Yeah, I think you have to be honest with yourself. And most most people on this planet, they're not even honest with themselves. Mm. They bullshit themselves. And, um, you know, unless you're honest with yourself, you're, you're never going to get to where you need to get. Um, and being honest with yourself might not be, might not feel good because you might have realizations about yourself that, Oh God, I need to change that. That's not working for me. Or, you know, this partner in my life is just dragging me down and probably maybe I should leave them. Or, you know, sometimes we have to make really, really big decisions, but they're always best in the long run. It's your soul, it's your soul speaking to you, but oftentimes we ignore what the soul's saying. Um, but the soul can see far, far greater than the than the mind. And I'm not demonizing the mind, but you know, the, the soul knows that in the long run that if you make certain changes, then the good times will, will come. But we, we kind of resist, we, 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 we resist for short term gain, you know. Mm. So and um, and absolutely like having people around 
that, that, that call you out. And uh, I love friends like that. You know, Tony, you're being an ass. Uh, really? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, of course, like if I'm out here saying, telling people to heal, I'm damn right sure I'm going to be doing the healing mm. on my own, my own self. I don't want to be one of these new age hypocrites, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, we can all get there. It just takes a bit of work. That's great. I think maybe we've come full circle in this conversation that when you get to a dead end, realize it's not really a dead end. You know, there's always work to be done. You know, if you're alive, there's always growth. There's always more light to put into your body, always more truth and uh, honesty. You know, I would say that comes even before sovereignty, you know, without honesty, you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love self growth. I, I, re I love finding life hacks and like little ways that perhaps ah. we can extend our life. And I, I, I find it, um, being human is is difficult but i love the challenge of it as well and i love trying to find those little life hacks i think that's the key to share with people i found that myself like the pain that you want to run away from or the pain that you want to face you know after you do it you feel so good afterwards you feel 10 times stronger 10 times more energetic 10 times you know your imagination so really you know in facing the pain we've been tricked you know, by, uh, you know, the bombs of the day, we'll say, you know, have a beer or chase another lady or, uh, you know, or just, you know, go buy, red. yeah, go buy a faster car and you'll be all right to have another vacation. Instead, you know, when you face yourself, you know, what you're really after in those temporary, you know, pleasures is what you really get 10 times even more and, and you get to keep them forever. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just, you know, a lot of the time people, they engage in habits, like you mentioned, alcohol and weed and drugs and sex and things like that, because they're trying to escape themselves. Mm. Um, they're trying to escape themselves because they haven't done the work on the parts of them that, that need to be resolved, which when you resolve, you won't want to escape yourself. So once you've done a, a, a good amount of work on yourself, you can just sit there on your own without anything and be happy as Larry because all your parts inside are happy. Um, so that's the other reason why, you know, giving up habits cold turkey without doing the inner work is really always, it's not always effective because, all right, you might give up smoking, but you might take up overeating mm. because the, the wound's still there. Right. And, yeah. and the entities will lock in, hook into the wound, turn the volume up, and they'll be like, Lorenzo, just have that, just have that extra glass of wine. You haven't got work in the morning yeah. and you'll be like, yeah, why not? And then all of a sudden you've got more entity attachments. So it's all interrelated. The more we work on ourselves, the less ways that entities can get in as well. Yeah. I find it's the opposite now, right? You know, I used to have a drink and I'd feel better and occasionally I don't anymore, but when I do, I feel worse Oh, because yeah, you know, even much worse. I, uh, obviously I don't drink, but I did have one glass of wine. Uh, about four months ago, uh, I, 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 I had such a busy week, like literally all week, and I was shattered. And then I went right. for a, went for a meal with my friend, and a moment of it wasn't weakness because I wasn't going to get drunk or anything. I thought I'm just going to have a one glass of red wine with my dinner, right? Yeah. And I thought, well, Why anyway, I, I I had a headache three days afterwards, ah. <laughs> so I'm um, like, no, I definitely can't do that. But yeah, so the yeah, more I, you clean yourself up, the more alcohol affects you. Especially I found, yeah, I found that too. You know, one day I had a beer and I go, you know, and you feel shitty all day long and you go, it's crazy. You used to have 20 beers, you know, 30 years ago and, and want more. And now I have one and I'm finding the same as you. It's like once you clean your body and you clean your energy, you know, and you clean, you know, your, your feelings, yeah. you'll find that you find those bombs don't bomb you anymore. They do the opposite. They bomb you. B-O-M-B, let's say, instead of B-A-L-M. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, alcohol. God, what a what a destructive thing that is to society. What is, what damage has that done down the years? Destroyed families, like the violence, killings. I mean, God, entities. Gee. And and yet we we uh, we we continue to engage in it. And I don't know. It's uh, it's crazy. Well, what would you say as we're, let's say, tying things up into this dead end then? How would you leave it with our, with our viewers? You know, dead ending the new age, understanding uh, yourself. I would, no, I would say believe in yourself ah. and, 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 you know, remember you're a human and re remember what that actually means. 
really when i say remember i'm talking really ponder on that fact sit there sit there alone and think and remember who and what you are and you don't need any of these savior programs or anything like like or these beings or anything like that and do the work you know it's 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 hard but do it yep yeah, you know go to tony's site there's so much there that can help you with this he's setting up a course related to uh, i i would say this kind of work you know, I'm doing a course, you know, govern yourself. Remember you're fantastic and you're beautiful. There's nothing but help for you out there. And, you know, Tony's one of the, uh, you know, let's say one of the good guys. And I appreciate getting to know him. And the more I chat with him, the more I'm understanding that we're very lucky that if you want to move away from being stuck or in a savior pattern, you can do it. As long as you're, as, as Tony said, sovereign and you realize you're actually more fantastic than you've given yourself credit for. For sure. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. I love you all very much. Tony, thank you. I'm happy to talk with you again as it's possible. If anybody has any questions for us or Tony or wants to join his course or our course, you know, uh, I'll leave the information below. And we're so happy to have you here. Like and subscribe, come back and uh, be strong. Can I just mention my website? It's transcendingtimes.org. Yes. People... Yeah. Go, go there as well. I'll leave a link below as well for Tony's site, of course. And I appreciate you all very much. Tony, thank you again. I'm hoping to talk to you again very soon. Bye, everyone. They made me lie, lie to my heart. No one tells me where I should start. Freedom first is what I say. Nothing now gonna get in my way.